Oh, okay, we're live. Um, I don't know if this means that we're recording, but I'm just going to proceed. Um, okay, so uh, welcome to the Habitat demos uh, for the week of, um, uh, well, today is July 7th. Um, and uh, uh, so what we have today, um, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate uh, some Windows functionality that we um, that released in yesterday's release. So yesterday, uh, we released Habitat 0.25.0, um, first release that we've done, uh, I think, since ChefConf. Um, and one of the things that that release includes is basically our, our Windows MVP. Um, so this is the first release that we um, have shipped uh, everything that you need inside of the Habitat binary uh, to be able to package um, Habitat applications for Windows and run them uh, on a Windows supervisor, as well as store them uh, in the Habitat depot. So you should have everything that you need to, um, uh, to take advantage of those things. And later today, uh, we'll be posting a blog post that kind of walks you through the, the, the details of that. What I'm going to be showing here is really just the development that we've done um, uh, over the last week or so, um, uh, in you know, in the the iteration of of getting this to a to an MVP, you know, most of this functionality we've been doing um, over the last several months. Um, but one of the features that what I'm going to show right right now is being able to run um, have the supervisor spawn. Uh, Windows services or, or you know, Habitat services on Windows as a different user. So what we've been doing to date in some of the, uh, the proof of concepts that you may have seen is essentially ignoring uh, the package service user variable. Mainly the reason why is that it's, it's, it's hard on Windows. So uh, on Linux, it's extremely simple if you're, you're running a sudo uh, to set the UID and the GID of a process. It's um, that's trivial. Uh, on Windows, it's actually hundreds of lines of code. Uh, and one of the challenges there, in addition to just getting that wired up correctly, is you need to be able to generate a user token. And to do that, you have to authenticate that user. And what that means is we actually have to persist that password um, because the, the supervisor may need to restart itself. Um, it has, you know, and there, there may be no user and will likely be no user there to put the password in. Um, we have to persist that. So we use, um, uh, we use some of the, the Windows Data Protection APIs to encrypt that uh, and ensure that only the Habitat binary can actually decrypt, um, can, can decrypt that password. But let me go ahead and, and demo that just so um, everyone can see that I'm actually not lying. Uh, so I'll screen share. And switch to my terminal here, and I'll bring up task manager here on the side just so that we can um, we can actually see the task come up running as a different user. So here I am. I'm going to call Habstart uh, on MySQL. Um, because I'm on Windows, it's going to use a, a, a Windows package, a, a you know, package for Windows. Um, and on Windows, we've now added this extra parameter called password. Um, and um, so uh, just to back up a little bit, we now on Windows do exactly what we do on Linux in terms of figuring out what user to run the service as. And that logic is, if you specify a package service user, we will use that user. If you don't specify that, we'll, we'll fall back to, do, to the default, uh, the, a, a user called HAB, but only if that HAB user exists on the machine. If there is no HAB user on the machine, we'll just use the whatever account the supervisor is running as. So on my machine, I, ha I have a HAB user. So that's exactly what, what uh, we anticipate to happen. And that user's password, uh, just you know, so everybody out there knows, uh, is HAB. Um, and um, so I'm going to go ahead and start this. Uh, it's now starting MySQL. So we should, yep, we see a MySQL D. And that is running under HAB. It's not running under Matt. Um, that's me, uh, which is what the supervisor is running as. Um, so that's that. Um, uh, kind of anti anticlimactic, but it, it it does indeed work. So we'll stop that. The other um, thing I'll show real quickly is just some uh, I call them Windows Studio aesthetics. So now that we're actually rolling this out as an official um, as an official MVP that uh, that we'll you know announce, um, we 
we want to make it a little bit more easy or, or obvious to enter the Windows Studio. Um, if you've been following along uh, and watching, maybe you saw my last uh, YouTube video where I where I uh, where I demonstrated what we had for Windows back in March. Uh, you might remember that the way to enter a Windows Studio is through an environment variable. Well, that's not a very nice user experience. Uh, and now we've actually exposed an additional an additional um, uh, argument to Hab Studio, which is dash W. So today, if you run Hab Enter or Hab Studio Enter or any of the Hab Studio commands and, and don't do a dash W, the default behavior is is basically the same behavior that's always been there on Windows, which is to break out to Docker and run a Linux studio um, in a Docker container. However, if you put specify dash Windows, we now, and you're on the Windows platform, uh, we will run a, a, a Windows studio. So that's exactly what I expect to see here. So yes, it's not going into Docker. This is an actual um, Windows studio. Uh, key differences here between just my normal everyday shell is I'm now running inside of our packaged uh, PowerShell, the PowerShell core. Um, my path is trimmed, so it's not bleeding out. You know all, everything in program files and all you know the other files it just has. Um, in fact, uh, here we can actually see what it has. Um, so it just has Habitat package stuff and C colon backslash Windows as well as C colon backslash Windows System 32 um, because without those things, it may, might not act like Windows. Um, and uh, as you can see, we've we've we have um, we've announced certain helper commands, which is the same thing that we do on Linux for how to start and stop and you know manage the the, the supervisor. Uh, some of these commands are different on Windows. We've we've made them more PowerShell. Uh, you know, conventional PowerShell-based um, uh, based uh, commands. What a lot of people complain about with PowerShell is the verbosity. So obviously, get supervisor log is longer than sup log. However, what's um, important to understand on PowerShell is you have auto completion. So I can do get su tab and bam, I have get supervisor log. And now, as you can see, it's bringing up there. There is indeed my supervisor log. Um, I'll close that if I do a uh, get process of hab soup I should see it running yep there it is now I can stop the supervisor um, and just uh, just to prove out that I actually did stop the supervisor now I get an, oh, an error when I try to bring up that process because it's gone um, so that's uh, that's really kind of most of what what's gone into you know since our last demo uh, the, the developments on Windows. Again, uh, keep your eye out today for a blog post where we'll be detailing it, detailing exactly um, what you can do on Windows, what's coming in Windows, and how the Windows experience today differs um, from the Linux experience today. There's not a whole lot of uh, differentiation there. Um, so uh, thanks a lot for joining us, and um, I'm going to uh, close this out. If I can figure out how to stop it, let's see.